Hello and welcome to Written Words. Later this month I am going to be going to a book festival in Sherwood Forest and ahead of that I thought I'd do a little bit of research into the legend of Robin Hood who supposedly lived in Sherwood Forest and the connections between the legend and literature. And as I was rummaging around looking for ideas, I came across a very interesting poem by John Keats called Robin Hood. This poem is actually a response to another poem, in fact, two poems written by a friend of Keats called John Hamilton Reynolds. And Reynolds wrote two sonnets about Robin Hood in a letter to Keats and this poem by Keats was his response sent back by return post in another letter. The original sonnets by Reynolds muse upon the legend of Robin Hood and wonder whether his memory still lives on in Sherwood Forest and Keats reply begins quite negatively at first. It's a bit of a political rant in a couple of places, but it ends with a very rousing call to action and ends on quite a positive note. So his political views are clear in the phrase, since men knew nor rent nor leases. And another phrase where he says, strange that honey can't be got without hard money. So his political views are clearly anti-capitalism and he is clearly not a fan of the role that money plays in society and the fact that it runs our lives. The idea that we are somehow slaves to money, we have to do whatever money dictates. There are also quite a lot of musical references in the poem. He mentions the bugle. He mentions the twanging bow. In, in this case, it means the bow of the archer, the bow for firing arrows, not the bow you would play a, a violin with, for example. But that bow still makes a musical twanging sound, even though it's not technically a musical instrument. He uses the word shrill. And he talks about a ditty, a little song, a ditty. He refers to a Merry Morris din. Morris being a Morris dance, a very popular folk dance with very characteristic folk music. And it's a very merry, very happy type of music. And he talks about the song of Gamelin. And then in the final verse, he calls us to sing. He tells us to sing. And he again refers to the bowstring and the bugle horn. So there is a lot of musical reference in there. In the first part of the poem, he's talking about the absence of music. So it's quite sad in tone. But in the final verse, it's more positive. He's telling us to sing, telling us to make the music that will bring this memory back to life. So it's a much more positive tone in the final verse. He also mentions the colour green three times in the poem. And green is very often a colour associated with Robin Hood. It also contrasts with the colour grey, which is mentioned at the very beginning of the poem. Green could be seen to symbolise the wood that Robin lived in, Sherwood Forest, where it's full of trees, so it's very green. He says he doth his green way beguile and he talks about the Grenna Shore, which is actually a quote from Chaucer's Canterbury Tales and it means the green wood. And then there is also a reference to Lincoln Green, which is a particular shade of green. Lincoln also being a city not very far from Sherwood Forest. So green could symbolise the wood, but green is also a very common symbol of life. So in adding these references to green, Keats is perhaps adding some life to the poem. At the beginning, he talks about the people who aren't there anymore, the things that don't exist. But then 
with these three green references, he's adding little bits of life to the poem too. And that, coupled with the musical references in the final verse, helps the poem to end on a positive note. So here is the poem. Robin Hood by John Keats To a friend No, those days are gone away And their hours are old and grey And their minutes buried all Under the downtrodden pall Of the leaves of many years Many times have winter's shears Frozen north and chilling east Sounded tempests to the feast Of the forest's whispering fleeces since men knew nor rent nor leases. No, the bugle sounds no more, and the twanging bow no more. Silent is the ivory shrill, past the heath and up the hill. There is no mid-forest laugh, where lone echo gives the half to some white, amazed to hear, jesting deep in forest drear. On the fairest time of June, you may go with sun or moon, or the seven stars to light you, or the polar ray to right you. But you never may behold little John or Robin Bold, never one of all the clan thrumming on an empty can some old hunting ditty while he doth his green way beguile to fair hostess merriment down beside the pasture trent. For he left the merry tale, messenger for spicy ale. Gone the merry Morris din, gone the song of Gamelin, gone the tuft belted outlaw, idling in the Grenner shore. All are gone away and past, and if Robin should be cast sudden from his turfed grave, and if Marian should have once again her forest days, she would weep. And he would craze, he would swear for all his oaks Fallen beneath the dockyard strokes, have rotted on the briny seas. She would weep that her wild bees sang not to her, Strange that honey can't be got without hard money. So it is, yet let us sing, honour to the old bowstring, Honour to the bugle horn, honour to the woods unshorn, Honour to the Lincoln Green, honour to the Archer Keen, honour to tight little John and the horse he rode upon, honour to bold Robin Hood sleeping in the underwood, honour to Maid Marian and to all the Sherwood clan. Though their days have hurried by, let us too a burden try. If you would like to explore the theme of Robin Hood a little more, there are a few more resources on our website at writtenwords.uk. And if you are interested in learning more about the English language and its literature, then do explore our YouTube channel. A new structured lesson is posted on the channel every week and in between there are some shorter videos on various aspects of language and literature. Thank you very much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in another video. And in the meantime, happy reading and happy writing.